Let's just jump into the very first topic because I think what has happened this last week and a half, about two weeks now, hasn't happened in years, which is just crazy, crazy comic book speculation, purchasing, LCS activity, and social media happening in the comic book community. That's right. This punchline character pretty much came out of nowhere. And when she did, it was an explosion in the collecting market, the reader's market, the speculator market. There's been a lot of butting heads about these this appearance and also a lot of confusion. Yeah, you were explaining it to me because I'm mostly on the older side. So with this modern book, you were just telling me like who Punchline is, what the the big kerfuffle is of, of like why fans are so upset. So one more time, like break it down because I think people really need to know the real understanding of where this is all coming from. Yeah, let's take it back to prior to the release of Batman 89 where this all really started to take off. Right, well, it all came from James Tinian, and I think that's what we agreed how to say his last name, right? Pretty, guys? pretty guys, sure that's what... All right, so James, he sent out something in a newsletter where he was saying, who is this person on uh, number 92, Batman 92? And it was a, it's, a, it's a woman with a knife, and she's mostly obscured in shadows. But he reveals, it could, it, this is punchline, right? This is punchline. On the Yasmin Pure Tree cover of 92, you see her in the like bottom left... But it's a character no one knew, and he's trying to hype it a little bit. Right. So, but what he said is, well, we could be seeing her in '89. We could be seeing her in uh, Hell Arisen number three, or maybe we could even see her in Joker's 80th anniversary. And people were like, well, what? Which one is it? What? What? And it turns out it was actually he sort of laid out what her appearances were going to be. It was going to be a cameo appearance in '89, and then there was going to be her full appearance in Hell Arisen number three. And then Joker's 80th anniversary, which hasn't come out yet, is going to be her origin. Uh, first cover appearance in 92. So everybody, you know, finally sort of agree, okay, it's going to be Batman 89, that, that entire, you know, first cameo. But then he did another newsletter where he said, well, you're going to see her cameo in 89. Then you're going to see her full body appearance. Her full body appearance. I don't think I've ever actually heard a content creator in the comic book collector's community call a full appearance, a full body appearance. How about a caveat there? And, but you didn't even realize that he might have been saying, well, is he saying it's a full appearance or is he saying it's a full body appearance? Because then people started to get confused. Mm -hmm. Hey, is Hell Arisen, is he going to be another cameo? Because we're sort of putting all of our, you know, all, all of our, what's the, what's the term? What's eggs the, in one basket. Eggs in one basket. Right. But then, and, and then people were thinking, well, maybe it's 92 that it's going to be a full appearance. But why this character? Like, new comic book characters get introduced to the market regularly. Happens all the time. And most of the time, they don't spike like crazy, especially to the way that the comics have spiked over the last two weeks. Very aggressive sales. But why this character? Well, because she was being said to be a new henchman. She's got ties to Joker. Her character design is pretty cool. And... The word Harley Quinn, like, competition has now been thrown in. Mean, he really said it's, it's pretty much Joker's new girlfriend. You right. And, and, you know, if you, we know that Harley Quinn is a, a major character, and you don't really see uh, a whole lot of advanced sort of promotion of new characters. Most of the time we're surprised by it. So right. the fact that this was sort of talked about, and books had already been ordered, so they were, there was a finite amount of them, you know, maybe, People really go crazy over this appearance. This Batman 89 came out the gate last Wednesday that we're recording this. It made number one on our top 10 list because people bought it in troves. Everyone picked this book up. Right. Okay. So today is Wednesday. It's Hell Arisen came out today. And there are about 600 sales on eBay of Hell Arisen number three, which is her first full appearance punchline. And there are maybe 300 of these books listed. So a major complaint that we've been seeing pop up in, online and hearing about is that oh, people are just buying this comic book so that they could, they could flip it. They want to make money. This is a greed thing. You know, people that are reading it are not able to get it. And it, and it seems like you would think, reading all this, that 
all of the books are being purchased and flipped. But really, if we're talking about 600 comic books that have been sold and 300 comic books that are listed, that's just under 1,000 books. And this print run, Hell Arisen number two, there were 350, there were 35,000 comics that went out to the market. So if that's similar, we're talking about less than 1% of books that are being bought and sold online. Yeah, I think this is a lot bigger than just people trying to make a quick buck. Now, are there people getting the book for five bucks and then posting it online and having it sell for 40? Of course, that, that does happen. That also happens all the time, regularly. This particular situation, I think, is a bit of FOMO. You know, people want to secure you their know, but book. I, but it's like, it's key. It's a key I, book. Let me cut you off because the FOMO thing is, this is a hobby. This is collecting. People collect. I mean, so is... FOMO, something that should be, I mean, that it's, you know, wanting to collect the history of a comic book title that you, that you love, a first appearance, a possible new significant character, right. that is part, that is woven into collecting, okay? So you could be a reader, you could be a reader, you could buy stuff digitally, and maybe, look, I could be a comic book reader that buys digitally or buys graphic novels because I want to read everything at once, but I could want to collect the keys because I like to own those little bits of pop culture history that are new introduction of characters. So, yeah, I think a lot of the problem for me when I hear it is that people feel like they have a right to own every book. Like I have a right when I show up at this shop to have my copy. It should be there. Okay. The shop but should have ordered enough for everybody outside of their shelf, which how, isn't the case. Yeah, yeah. When the shop has got too many books. You know, like, where, where are you buying those other issues, okay? Like, a shop can't count for the interest level of every person who's going to come through that door. They will go out of business. They have to keep their orders tight. I'm sorry, okay? And because you are a reader and you're buying this book, you are no more special than somebody who's a collector wanting to buy that book. You are not owed that right. But I'm are you sorry. saying? But are you saying the collector that comes in once every two months... Are you saying that they are equal in weight, the reader who buys every week or the collector that comes in once every two months? Are those, are those equal, equal customers of importance? Oh, if you're talking about customers for a shop, yeah. then obviously the person coming more frequently is important. Right. So do okay. you want it, doesn't the shop want to make sure that that person gets their book? Well, if that person is well, regular, how, they should have a shop. If that person is that regular, like I said, if he wants to guarantee a book, but if he is unaware of a book and its popularity and someone else comes in that shop and buys them, am I going to turn away as a shop owner customers? This is an interesting because conversation like, here. Like, I like where this is going because this actually was the main reason why I wanted to talk about this book today. Because aside from seeing the biggest wave of like collectors go to their LCS in just in, uh, you can't even count how many people. I saw somebody today post that they were at their shop at 6 a.m. waiting at the door to get their copy. Camping out. Camping yeah. out. So like seeing that to me, that's a win. The publisher produced something that's awesome. And mind you, if you don't think that's okay, like if you're like, oh, someone waited outside at six o'clock for a comic book. Okay, I wanna remind everybody that we're talking about something in print form that is available digitally. This is all stuff that shouldn't be right, happening, right? 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 But, yeah. but, but here's, here's the thing though. I started collecting when I was nine. I never had a, a pull box. I liked the, the, the pageantry, the tradition of walking into a comic book store, sure. looking through everything, pulling it off the shelf, taking a look through it. If somebody collected all that stuff for me, put it in a box so that I could pick it up, it's not that Your, those the romanticism were, is gone. Those from print me. runs were much larger when you were younger. That by is the way. true. And there were it's comics just, everywhere at that point. Yeah, you could go to Target. Far less stores you know, now. Rather not Target, like Walmart. Print runs are know. tighter for a reason. That's true. Okay, that is true. Yeah. So like to just hope that your shop's going to have enough overstock for everybody. There are no. a handful of shops that realistic. have gone on point. record this week, and. They're not speaking very, very highly of what's going on. And that's something that we gotta just nip in the butt. It's we're uh, in what other industry have you heard like shop owners going on the record and basically insulting their customer base? I mean, or their potential customer base? Because what if punchline? What if that got you know a handful of customers excited about comics and they think, you know what? I like this 
character. I'm interested to see where the story is going. I want to go in. I want to buy this, and I want to, you know, we'll see where it goes from there. These are potential customers. I mean, that's yeah. how I see it. I mean, we look at Batman Adventures 12. Okay, that sparked Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn was everywhere. New fans, new titles, new readership. This could spark that. Yeah, in the beginning, people are trying to jump on that train. That's natural for a lot of people. Okay, so I'm excited for it. And, and she could fall through and not even be a hit in a right. month. Okay, who knows? You can get this book maybe, you know, let the hype go away. It's going to level out. And if you're a reader, there will be a second printing. If you're a reader and that first print doesn't matter to you as a reader, because that's the biggest thing I hear, I just want to read it. I'm not a collector like everybody else trying to make money. Then wait for the second print. You know it's hot. Tell your shop you want it, and it'll be there for you. So there's an aspect of this that I want to just kind of, I don't know, focus on a little bit because every shop is different. How LCSs structure and manage their titles, they're different across the board. It's really true. I mean, heck, I saw a Bleeding Cool article today where the shop owner was saying that he's making his uh, new customers that come in trying to get the um, issue, issue three, three. If they want to get that, yeah. they got to get one and two. They have to buy all three of them because th to him, the first two issues were a flop because yeah. no one bought them. But now everyone wants issue three and he thinks that's wrong. He thinks that's hurting the market. So that's one example of one shop owner who thinks that that's a good route to go in his community. I'm not going to judge him. Let, let, apparently he's been up and running since 1985. Kudos. Sounds like he has been running since 1985. I wonder if he accepts debit cards. I digress. But... Shops in general have limits of how many issues you can buy. How, can you buy one? Can you buy two? Can you buy all of them? Um, are you taking care of your shelf customers? Um, what do you do are after... You raising prices on a hot book before like, people can yeah, get that's there a to problem. even buy it on the yeah. day of Wednesday. There's all, I mean, they're all doing different things. And when this type of speculation happens and all these customers come in, you see shops true colors. You see what they do. And what I'm realizing is that there's no consensus. They don't know what to do because they're not ready for this kind of stuff. Well, you know, I mean, I feel like this character has staying power. I think that James Tiny and already he already said that she's gonna be featured in the Joker War storyline, which by the way, he's also introducing another character in number ninety two, the under Broker is the name. And, you know, people are already cosplaying as punchlines. So that tells me that the character is resonating already with an audience. And to Jeff's point about what Harley has done for the comic book industry, I think that characters like that and possibly characters like Punchline bring more women into comic books, into being interested about comic books, especially this genre, this superhero genre of comic books. Yeah. I really like the design, man. I'm excited to see some true cosplay in this already. I yeah, hopefully it's C2E2. We'll see it's C2E2. We'll do a little, we'll, we'll count them off. We'll have to punchline. Yeah, I want to see how many punchlines we see. Yeah. And I'm excited about this character. Um, I understand the concern in the community because when comics spike the way they do in such a short time, you know, it's a cause for concern because, you know, we want to protect our community's wallets. We don't want them to lose money, but that's the cost to play because, you know what? The negative remarks that are happening are the, the people who are not as optimistic on a new character. Those people are just negative in general. And they're the ones who are always going to complain and come back to the 90s or variants are crushing the market. There's always going to be the people just knocking it down. And, and then always, it, they'll be saying that for 10, 15 years. They'll say that. And then when it finally happens, they'll be, I told you so. Yeah. It's like, if it eventually something, there'll be a correction in every market at some point to some degree or whatever it is. But like, if you're gonna be negative in general about that stuff, then that's just you well, <laughs> and yeah, your personality I, with it. Right. I'd rather look on the pause and be like, cool character, excited for the future, love the design. Maybe I missed out on the newsstand for the first print. I'll catch it around next time or another book or now that I'm aware, knowing this character is available and now I'm gonna keep track of this title. Now that there's something happening here and exciting, what else is coming? Right. Yeah, Jeff, you make such a good point because there's so much negativity. There's so many people telling other people how to collect. Oh, these people, they uh, have FOMO or these people, we're gonna laugh at them when they when if this book tanks. But the bottom line is people like to collect. People collect what they want. People are making decisions that they're comfortable with. And I, 
I just don't understand why there's so much criticism against what people want to do in this hobby, right? I suggest if LCSs are having an issue because people are coming into their store to buy comic books. I know it sounds weird to say that, but right. that's what's happening. I would like to look at this in a different way. If I had an LCS, which I don't, shout out Mel Geek Comics. <laughs> if I had a shop and there was a time where a Wednesday, by the grace of Thor, that waves of people were calling in, requesting a comic book, like to the point where they're irritated that they would take to the computer and spend hours writing something about their complaint, that's the day you should do a 25% off sale. That's a great idea, right? Right. Like, like use it. On your use bed. it. Yeah. Don't complain. And maybe books that, you know, might not be moving or, you know, hey, why don't you come in? We got a 25% off sale or, you know, it's everything is an opportunity once there's a customer that you are interacting with. And I'm not a shop owner, so that might be easy to say, but there's got to be something better than admonishing people that you might be calling speculators that might be readers who want to pick up this book because they're reading traf- graphic novels or they're reading digital. But there's got to be a, a better way to invite people instead of turning them away. 